Hello everyone. Welcome to another edition of Sunday School from St. Andrews in Petrolia. Today's story comes from the book of Amos. Amos was a prophet, but he was not a prophet like Elijah and Elisha. They basically spent their lives as prophets. That was their job, if you want to think of it that way. Amos did not only prophesy for God, he also was a sheep breeder and he grew sycamore trees for their figs. Amos comes from the southern land of Judah, but he travels to the northern land of Israel to give his prophecies. And if you recall, Judah was the more God-fearing of the two countries. Israel was quite often the one where people worshipped idols, not the true God. And Amos wants to remind the people of who they should be worshipping. We learned a couple weeks ago of a man anointed by God to be King Jehu and how he took over the country of Israel and he started off well by doing what God wanted. But things changed. He got rid of Ahab's family. He got rid of the king who was evil of the southern kingdom. He got rid of all the relatives of both of those evil kings so he didn't have to worry about them trying to come and take over the throne from him. And he even got rid of all the priests in the temples of the false god Baal. And God was happy with that. But Jehu also allowed people to worship idols. Believe it or not, after all that, he left those golden calves who the first king of Israel, Jeroboam, put up. He allowed those to stand and he encouraged the people to worship them. God is not a golden calf. Those were just idols, and God was not pleased when Jeroboam put those up. So although Jehu started off well, he didn't end well in his reign, and his son following him and his grandson weren't much better. But his great-grandson, Jeroboam II, seemed to be a different fellow, because under him, the kingdom of Israel prospered. They did very well versus other countries surrounding them. They were profitable, they had success in war and gaining territory, but again, they didn't worship God as he should be worshiped. And it was at this time during his reign that Amos shows them the way to God. And the word Amos actually means burden bearer. And Amos did bring burdens on the people of Israel because he reminded them of what they owed to God and how they should act. And we'll hear one of those stories today. So swindlers and robbers from the book of Amos. When Jehu died, his son and grandson reigned after him. But it was his great-grandson, Jeroboam II, who made Israel strong again. He had a long and successful reign of over 40 years, but he did not trust or obey God. There was much that was wrong in the land. Although they were financially successful and militarily successful, they were not spiritually successful. God sent Amos to remind Israel of his laws and to warn them to change their ways. Amos was a sheep breeder who lived in the southern kingdom of Judah. When he went to Israel, he took with him wool to sell. Well, Amos stood up in the marketplace at Bethel and told the people what God thought of them. You traitors cheat your customers, he called them. You use false weights so that they get less than they pay for. Your prices are so high that poor people cannot afford to buy. And when they do, you sell them rubbish instead of the good grain on display. Amos continued, If anyone can't pay his bill, you take him as a slave, or else you take his clothes from him and leave him shivering with cold at night. God will not tolerate us behaving like that. So what's he accusing them of? He's accusing them of cheating cheating them in many ways, and leaving the people worse off as a result and not caring that these people were worse off and not caring that they weren't being good, decent people. Amos caught sight of a wealthy woman picking her way amongst the stalls. She was dressed in a rich embroidered gown and smothered in expensive perfume. Very, very few people would have worn perfume at that time. 
because most of it would have come from countries far away. You women are to blame too, he went on, because most of market sellers would have been men. So he's not just accusing the men of being bad in Israel, but the whole nation. You are the ones who make your husbands cheat and swindle so that you can have money to spend on fine clothes and wine and perfume. All you rich people want to do is sit around all day, swilling wine and playing new songs while your slaves toil. That means they work hard, hungry and exhausted. God demands kindness and fair play. And remember from earlier lessons, when people had debts they could not pay off, either they or their children were taken as slaves to work off those debts. All you people of Israel, listen. God wants justice in the courts. As it is, no one gets a fair trial unless he can hand the judge a fat bribe, meaning they give him money to, to judge in their own favor. God says, let justice flow freely and show fairness and kindness to each other. He's accusing them of doing none of those things. People are not treated fairly in the courts. The courts do not mete out justice. And they are not kind to each other when they are in the marketplace and selling their goods and buying goods. They are taking every opportunity they can to cheat the poor, to cheat hardworking farmers, and to make sure that they have a profit when the other person doesn't. But the people did not want to listen to God's words. When Amos dared to speak out against the bull calf shrine at Bethel, and even to criticize the king, Jeroboam II, one of the priests there threatened him. Go back to Judah, he said. Do your preaching there. And that's where our story ends. And most of the book of Amos is about him trying to tell people in different nations that they should be living better lives. They should be following God's idea of being kind and loving and caring of each other, to look after each other just as carefully as they look after their own fortunes and their money. But they don't do that, and they don't listen to Amos. It has several lessons for us, even that short story. It tells us mainly to treat other people fairly. Think of other people's needs, not just our own. It tells us that outward trappings... Our clothes, our jewels, our hairdo, fancy cars, big houses, the latest toys or games, none of that matters. What matters is how we act, how we treat people, how we show love to them. We show his love for us when we show love to others. Jesus said, love thy neighbor as thyself, or love other people, treat others just as well as you do yourself. And that's one thing that the people in the story don't do. Those vendors and sellers, those merchants, do not treat other people fairly. They don't treat them well. They try to take advantage of them at every single turn. And ultimately, it all boils down to don't be selfish. The people in the story just want to accumulate money at any cost as long as they don't pay that cost. They'll take advantage of anybody they can just so that they can make a profit. And that's exactly what Amos is referring to when he talks about the false weights that they use. At, in that time, they had weights on scales to measure the value of things. You had to assume that the weights were accurate. When they said you had a pound of grain, you actually had a pound of grain, not three quarters of a pound. And that's what Amos is saying they were doing. They were selling you less than what you were paying for. Now, normally, if someone cheats you, you can take them through the justice system and hopefully you get your just rewards at the end. But at this time, Amos says they bribed the judges, meaning the shopkeepers and merchants gave the judges money to always decide in their favor no matter what, that they would say, oh, no, you weren't cheated at all. So they had no way of ensuring that they were treated fairly. No one to stand up for them. Now, there are many ways of being selfish. You might think if you have a bag of candy and you don't share it with your brothers or sisters, 
you're being selfish. That's one way of being selfish, you're right. But people can be selfish with their time. People can be selfish with their love. People can be selfish in how they think. One way to be selfish in how you think is if you only think about yourself. God wants us to always be aware of what's going on around us. And he's encouraging the people of Israel through Amos to wake up, open their eyes and see how they're treating others and change their behavior. Now, during this time, when we're shut in with our family for the most part, and we don't get out and about and see things as usual, it's easy to feel sorry for yourself and what you're going through. But sometimes there's other people who are actually worse off. If you look around, you're all with your families, right? There are a lot of people that don't have families living close by that certainly don't have them living in the same house with them. There are people who haven't been out with people for months. Just seeing people on the TV or on the computer isn't the same as seeing a person right there in front of you. But throughout the world, throughout every year, there are always people who are worse off than we ourselves. There are people who don't have money. There are people that don't have food. There are people who don't have homes. There are people who don't have friends, who don't have family, who don't have a lot of things that, that we take for granted because we are fortunate. That's the lesson we can learn from Amos, to always think of others. Think of everything we have and think of other people who don't have those things. Maybe there are people who are lonely or sad or in need near where you live. Maybe there's someone you know who falls into some of these categories. So this week I want to issue a challenge to you. Find a way that you can think of others. Find a way to do something kind for someone else to show them that you care, to make them smile, to make their day. Start by looking around your own home, at your brothers or sisters, your parents. Is there something nice that you could do for each of them to show them that you care? Something to maybe make their day a little brighter or a little easier? Then think about friends or neighbors or extended family. Maybe you could send them a note or a card to say that you're thinking of them, that you hope they're okay, that they're having a good day or a good week. Maybe you could make a drawing for them or drop off cookies or muffins or something like that that you've helped make yourself. What about a little farther afield? Maybe there's a charity that you could donate something to. Perhaps you have some old toys or clothes or or maybe mom or dad could help with donating some food to the local food bank. It's not enough to just go to church in whatever form it takes these days or to pray every day. We need to show love to people, not just quietly in our own hearts, in our own minds, but to show love and give love to others. That's what makes God happy. That's what God wants for us to be loving to each other. Jesus actually told us, love thy neighbor as thyself, meaning love everyone around you. Show them the love that you receive. Show them kindness. Be fair. Don't be hurtful. All those ways that we want to be treated is how we should treat others too. Another way to show love for others is to engage in random acts of kindness. That just means doing Small little things to make someone's day a little brighter. Maybe it's a matter of leaving a little note in somebody's mailbox saying, I hope you have a great day. I'm thinking of you. It'll make someone smile. So I hope you'll remember this lesson from Amos and how he told the people to treat others fairly, to think of their needs as well as our own. And I hope you take me up on this week's challenge to see what you can do to make someone else's day a little brighter. And if you work at it, you can do it every single day of the year. All it takes is something little. It could even be a hug to give in the morning to one of your family members, a kiss goodnight, or to tell them that you love them. Any of those things would definitely make their day brighter. Always try to be fair and thoughtful when you're dealing with other people. Try to be aware of what's going on in their life as well as your own and show them that you care every chance you get. I hope you have a good week. Thank you for listening. And remember Amos's command to treat others fairly. And don't be selfish. Have a great week. And come back next time for another story. Bye-bye.